Hello and welcome to the iGeeks blog show an Apple exclusive podcast where we talk about teeny tiny every possible information about the Apple ecosystem I'm your host Harshanki and in today's episode well we thought you know we should come up with a very exciting guest for you because I know how you guys get all excited and riled up whenever Apple launches a new product and what is the first thing that we look for whenever Apple comes out with a new product the reduced prices well yeah of course that and the perfect accessories for your gadgets so why not know everything about which is the hottest gadget or uh, and the accessories for your apple products from the creative genius and the co-founder of 12 south mr andrew green himself hi andrew welcome to the episode how are you doing today hello hashaki nice to be with you pleasure to e meet you andrew how is the day for you i hope everything good at your end Uh, it's wonderful. We're we're launching a new product today, so that's always our favorite days at Twelve South when we have a uh, new products coming out. Well, thank you for giving us the time because product launches can be really time consuming, and I really appreciate you giving some time to our listeners. So, what is this new product? It's funny. This- all the work, uh, all the work uh, start is all before it. Once you launch a product, actually, you get to breathe for like a second or two. <laughs> so it's fun being with you this morning. So, is this the book case that we're talking about? Yes, uh this morning, uh June 28th, we actually just launched the brand new bookbook uh for MacBook case for the new amazing 14 to 16-inch MacBook Pros. Um so I have a 14-inch MacBook Pro myself, so I've been uh waiting uh quite impatiently for it myself. That's amazing. Why don't you tell us more about the case? Oh, I mean, the bookbook the bookbook is its own thing actually. Um and we we manufacture them in India. actually we have a partner in india that we partner with for um most of our book books so um it's really an amazing product um there's a lot of people who just are just passionate about the book book um and so it's almost um you know uh, up to us to kind of carry the book book torch and keep creating amazing versions of book book we have customers that like put their their previous gen book books up on a shelf you know right next to all the rest of their books and they they collect it and they it really means a lot to them in a really deep level and so how fortunate are we to like make a an accessory that really touches a person's emotions uh like that like book book tends to do Absolutely it's not just a case it's an experience that you guys are building for the audience and I cannot wait to test some of these ourselves we are really excited to that but I'm sure the case came out within a month of WWDC so how was the WWDC experience for you and what are your views about the event So we don't uh develop software per se so we're not directly involved in WWDC right. But as you know, it's actually really one of the last um events where uh you know Apple and Mac Faithful come together. Right. And Apple introduces lots and lots of amazing new um operating systems and software, but then also um in Cupertino and and around San Jose typically oh. is this huge gathering of of right. the Apple Faithful and the developers as well. So we've had a pause in that action for the last couple of years for obvious reasons, but I mean at, even before that WWDC was kind of the last great party uh-huh. um uh, of, of mac enthusiasts right, right. so uh-huh. so for 12 now we've actually participated there we've we've gone out and we sponsored parties and just hung out with like you know uh, uh, uh macintosh press and stuff it's a very small community and we're all friends okay. and it's great to see them um and then as far as uh, what apple does we're always looking at products uh products can either you know fit with all the stuff we already have um and everything is great that's a good day um or apple could decide to change all of their hardware and all of a sudden all the products we had need to be updated <laughs> so um so at the wwdc keynote and and often the hardware introductions um uh you, you never know it affects us in a lot of ways because we're also huge fans right so you know they introduce all the stuff and it, and it's so cool and and we're like geeking out a, right. along with the whole rest of the world and then we like calm down a little bit and look at okay well this doesn't fit anymore but this is an amazing opportunity and needs a solution that we're the perfect people to make so right. on and so forth the so WWDC is an event um with good news bad news but is overall really one of the last great parties for Apple faithful so how does it work for you guys because 
any product, I mean, Apple as a company is coming up with just one product, right? But you need to have accessories and different fabrics and different materials, different finishes, different colors. And you have to develop them as fast as possible because the competition out there is pretty crazy. So just walk us through the process. How does it happen? Everything. I'd also like to know if you guys get a sneak peek into the products before they come into the market. Like, do you guys have some partnerships with the company itself? Or are you just like one of us waiting for the rumors? Uh, we very much are one of everyone else. We do not get sneak peeks. Um, uh, we, we react um, uh, when everyone else reacts uh, with all the good news. Uh, you know, being in the space, we have a lot of guesses, you know, some expectations. It's kind of funny when you look backwards, uh -huh. Apple's development seems very logical. But it's all that guessing forward that's a little more difficult, right? Um, so um, we basically have, you know, two or three different kinds of products that we would make. Some are revisions. So, you know, we just introduced the new book book for the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. But of course, just a few weeks ago, Apple introduced a new MacBook Air with the new M2 chip, right? So we will do a book book for that. And so we're working on that. Uh -huh. So with new hardware announcements, it's um, it's products that we already have, product families uh -huh. like BookBook, Book, like BookArc stands, um, that we will you know see the new hardware and make revisions to accommodate that hardware. Mm -hmm. But then also we look at what opportunities there are, you know, like um, the 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 Mac Studio, right. and and uh, and the new Studio Monitor. We're like, well, I mean, that was an amazing product for Apple to finally get back into the monitor business with. But we look at that and goes, well, what accessories um, do users and customers need to make that work in their own workspace? Um, is it high enough? Is it low enough? You know, uh, we really kind of concentrate on the accessories that kind of fit it um, right. into the user's world, into the user's space and how they use it. So, I mean, and that's what we do better than like a lot of people is to like look at the hardware and certainly new hardware and see are there gaps, are there things we can do to help that hardware be customized to how most people will use it. And, and that's what we do. That's amazing. So you must have uh, a pretty elaborate team backing up the entire process, right? You'd have uh, people who are testing the products and have product designers. Then you'd have someone for sales and marketing and PR, like a huge team there supporting just the product development, right? Not a huge team. There's about 20 of us uh, or less. I mean, four are in our warehouse here in Charleston, South Carolina in the US. Uh -huh. um, we, um, it's actually a very, very tiny team, very concentrated, very small. And, and we are not looking at spreadsheets deciding what the next product is gonna be. Okay. We typically kind of go by the gut, go by what feels right. And because we're such passionate fans of the platform itself, we often are making products that we want first and that we hope our customers agree with, right? And so I think that's the difference. I think there's a lot of companies out there looking at the top 50 products on Amazon, you know, looking at looking at more exploitively how to like, you know, you know, make accessories and stuff. That's not really us. We really approach the the space um as fans right and as users um and that has allowed us to really see the the um not so obvious products and and come out with ideas and solutions from from a fan perspective from a user perspective not from a spreadsheets and focus group perspective we don't we're not huge fans of that you said that so beautifully that if you're creating the product for yourself and if and only if you have the need for it, then the world is obviously going to buy it and invest in it. But you do have a highly efficient team because if a team of just 20 people can create such yeah. a huge empire and such cool accessories, I mean, kudos to that. When we're talking about accessories, we cannot help but discuss this one product that Apple launched uh, some part of the last year, which was... Uh, talked about and discussed a lot. Now, I'm sure if you connect to the meme references, you'll remember the AirPods Max and the cases that it came up with. What are your views on the case? I would really like to know. I mean, it's a very outdated topic, but since you are the accessories guru over here, why not just talk about it? We we looked at it really <laughs> carefully, actually, and we, we, we thought about developing a case for it. Uh -huh. um, 
And, and we still might because, you know, there was a lot of people not huge fans uh, about what came with the product. Uh, we have some co- some competitors that did some great work in that space that do more cases than we do. Okay. We actually are a little, we don't do a huge amount of cases. We certainly have the book book. Um, yes. We have the, the little surface pad, which is this tiny little sliver yes. uh, of cover on here. But that's kind of it. We actually kind of enjoy working in, in hardware and stands. Yes, your stands are incredible. I mean, right. tens of stands in the back and you're being used somewhere. I would have showed you, but maybe at a later time. Uh, sure. Yeah. But so so for the Max, it's a it's a really cool product and it felt like a really exotic product, right. you know, um, and um, and so we looked at, you know, some of the solutions that came out. Um, from some of the other folks and and it seemed to be fine, you know? And so if we don't think that we can really add something unique and special to an accessory, we just won't do it because, you know, we know other people will, that's totally fine. We'll let them. We, we really try and stay away from any kind of me too products as much as we can. And if we can't add kind of that 12 South value, that 12 South magic to it, we just let everyone else handle it. And so that's kind of where we ended up on the Max. It's a really cool product. There's there's a handful of like, you know, great like additional accessories for that. And that's fine for now. That's a very nice slippered answer. How did you get into the accessory market, Andrew? Because I believe when I was working through your choreograph, you're working for Philips before, and then you had a lot of other profiles also. So what was it that made you want to get into entrepreneurship or start an accessory business? And why Apple? So um, I, I come from a background working at, at marketing and ad agencies in New York City. Uh-huh. Um, while I was there, before that, I was a that struggling singer. Dream, my friend, if you're working in marketing in New York, then you made it at some point. No, that was the backup. The dream oh, was uh, being a singer songwriter. I was signed to Warner Brothers um, and I was in New York City. And so I got a Macintosh to actually do my digital recording um, and taught myself graphic design. And so when I ran out of money as a struggling songwriter, um, I learned um, Illustrator, Photoshop and Quark Express, right. old school shout out to Quark and started freelancing and temping in New York uh-huh. and then found a huge passion for it. And it went from kind of knowing the, the tools, the technology to like channeling creativity through the tool as well. And so fast forward um, to like, you know, uh, starting uh, my family in Nashville, Tennessee, which is where I was born. Um, there's a small company there called Griffin Technology. Okay. Um, that I fell into helping them do some stuff and oh. ended up working with them. And that's when I actually started developing products. I always kind of had product. Everyone has product ideas, by the way. Right. Everyone at least once or twice a, a day or a week or a month says, why don't they make this? Why don't they have that? Right. So the only difference is, is that we took that a step further. And actually my mentor, his name was Paul Griffin. And, um, and I needed a stand actually for my titanium power book that was back in the day before they called it macbooks and um yeah right and then so so we made a prototype of a stand because there was literally no stands in the world for a laptop how weird is that but 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 me and and the creative community were using power books next to one of the first cinema displays from apple and um i had my macbook on a ipod box Right. And so that was silly. So the very first product that I ever designed was a Lucite stand to hold up my titanium power book next to my Lucite um, cinema display from Apple as a creative. And so from there, it just went. And I tell you, the first time I held a box Uh with a barcode on it that was from a napkin doodle, I was hooked. Right. So it it was pretty special. So I come from creative background and why Apple, why Mac? Because that was truly, as Steve Jobs has said, a bicycle for the brain, right? It is it is the tool that allowed me to channel my creativity into action and into like stuff I can get paid for and stuff I love doing. So uh, and so that's that's kind of how we're here now. Great. Andrew, you don't seem uh, much of a number guy, or even if you are, you're just very diplomatic about it. But I have to ask you this question that if you look at the statistics and all the data of the last decade, Apple accessories are sold much better and they're also priced higher compared to the Android accessories or Windows accessories. So was that one of the important decisions that took into consideration before developing the product or while expanding 12 South as a company? 
Well, no. So, so 12 South um, <clears throat> focuses primarily on Apple, number right. one, because we're passionate, inspired by it. And when you're passionate about something is when you're going to do your best creative work, isn't it? Absolutely. Right. Um, uh, two is, is that, um, you know, the, the fan base for Apple, myself included, is, right. is rabid for stuff made just for us. So I can recall the times just a few years ago when there weren't really Apple exclusive accessories, especially for their Mac desktops. Yeah. And so some larger companies, the, the Targuses out there and the, the Belkins out there would have PC accessories and do a white version of it and call that Mac compatible. Right. And so Mac yeah. users don't really love that, uh, like PC accessories painted white. And so well, this is the Mac version. No, 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 no. So from the very beginning, 12 South wanted to dedicate themselves to making at least some completely exclusive solutions for, for Apple users, because that's what we want, right? Okay. You know, like what's crazier than like a shelf that sits on the back of an iMac or a cinema display, right? Who would do that? Well, 12 South did because we needed it to put our backup drives. And if we made like something like that for every computer, we couldn't even focus and do a solution like that. So, so that's the third thing is that it's practical as well because Apple actually makes a really small amount of hardware, right? They only have one consumer desktop, the iMac, and they have kind of a smaller family of MacBooks, but there's not 50 MacBooks, you know, like some of the, the PC brands. There's like six, there's like eight. And so you actually can find opportunities to do unique, amazing accessories because their platform is actually relatively small and sequestered and you can find, you know, magic to, to do um, in developing um, accessories for Apple. So, so we're passionate about it. Our customers are passionate about the platform. Um, and because Apple focuses their hardware so much, it actually creates opportunities for us to do really special stuff for the platform. So that's really kind of my answer on, on why 12 South is so Apple focused. Why is it expensive? It's not. You get what you pay for. Um, we make the product as best as we can. Um, and then we put it out there at the most fair price we can. There's always cheaper options. Knock yourself out if that's what you want, if you're on a budget. Um, um, but but we, we uh, all of our products are, are priced extremely fair, to be honest with you. Absolutely. Remember, actually, our stands, you can always just put them on like a stack of books or a box. And by the way, that's what I did, too. Right. <laughs> that's why I made the curve is because my laptop was sitting on an iPod box. So so, uh, you know, we, we welcome the opportunity, but it's, you know, is what it is kind of. No, no, 100%. Uh, I mean, not just are your products fairly priced, but I'm sure we're getting much more than what we are paying for compared to all the other testers that we receive. And that is pretty incredible. But the answer you just gave uh, Loki motivated me and inspired me to come up with you know, accessories. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners here are also motivated from you to get into the accessory market or see if there's a need and come up. So is there any advice you'd like to give to the future entrepreneurs or if anyone would like to join the accessories market in the future? What would be the Oh advice? my gosh, yes. I mean, like, so so we need your ideas, right? Okay. So I, I, I think I think we like take risks and put stuff out there. We we try and come up with new ideas and introduce it. And, and the world needs entrepreneurs to continue doing that. I mean, like think of all the developers of software that's just like one or two people and stuff like that. That's, that's amazing. And look how it's changed the world. Apple has just made the vehicle for that. It's the, 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 the software developers that, that make some of the magic, that like makes this whole thing turn. And I mean, I would say that, you know, to like a person who wants to make some. So, OK, so so uh, a person wants advice on how to start their own company to be their own entrepreneur. The first thing is, is that make sure that their idea is unique. And if it's not, keep working on it until it is right. Do not try and come out with something that is so close to other stuff that you're going to have to just price your product down. Don't do that. Just keep working on the product until the product is remarkable. Um, and, and that will be your vehicle to have success with that in the market space. Second thing is, is that it's never been easier. Um, you have social media to like reach customers. Um, if you're you know talking to your tribe, your community, um, they're going to listen to you if you have something new to say. Okay. Um, and then the third thing is, is um, don't spend too much money doing it. <laughs> uh, like do your budget from the ground up. Don't say, 
there are, you know, 10 million Mac users. So if I sold a half of them, I'll be great. Say I can pay for my prototype if I can sell 70 of these products to my friends and my area. So work from the bottom up, not the top down in terms of money and budget. So you always have the flexibility to keep revisioning and trying because your first idea might be good, but your second idea might be great. But that only depends on if you have money to try the second idea. So work from the bottom up budget, not the top down. That's aptly put. I mean, it, you've been very straightforward yet. You've given the right kind of advices. And I'm sure our listeners are going to take a lot of important lessons from this episode. Uh, can't wait you, to see what they make. Sorry? I can't wait to see what they absolutely, make. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of creative ideas. We have the book book case coming up for our audience real soon. I mean, the product has launched today as we speak. So I'm going to add the link. You guys can go check out the case and uh, maybe purchase it as soon as possible. Before we end this up episode, Andrew, is there um, any advice you'd give to our listeners? Oh, before that, I'd really like to know which is the one Apple product that you cannot survive without. And you only have to name one the the one accessory or the one software narrow it down uh we'll name one product apple product or hardware and then one accessory oh uh, right accessory. yeah um you know i was thinking about that uh -huh. um i'm gonna i'm gonna answer two okay. because <laughs> because i am now uh, so i'll tell you so all right for me um at the end of the day apple makes a lot of amazing things and i would say it still comes back to the macbook the macbook is my you know, bicycle for my brain, as it were. And it's where I, I've been able to create, you know, all of my amazing things. It's where weird, crazy stuff that happens here Good. gets out into the world there. And so I, I really can't really go any further than, than the MacBook being, being the creative tool that's, that's allowed, um, you know, the, the, the life that I have and, and the company that we've created. The MacBook is, is the central tool to that. My second answer is what Apple product, I'm gonna like make up the own question, right? <laughs> what Apple product is kind of like, like underrated for changing the complete world uh -huh. um, and, and changing all of our worlds that we live in right now. Okay. And it's the iPod, right? Um, without the iPod, there would never have been an iPhone. Uh, without the iPod, there would never been an iPad. Um, and remember, Apple really wasn't a consumer product before the iPod, the iPod was the, the first kind of product that was in like regular stores, like in the US Target and, and you know, and, and so the iPod, I think really doesn't get enough credit for really like shifting the entire worldview okay. um, to the mobile world that we all live in and enjoy right now. Okay. So um, the most unsung hero of, of our tech world in our lifetime is the iPod. Absolutely. Now, if you've talked about the iPod, I cannot help but ask you about iPhone 14. Is there one rumor sure. that you low-key want to be true? One rumor that you just wish to be true? I, I mean, no. I mean, I, I, it, it appears that their primary concentration, the biggest, the biggest hardware difference they can make now is, is the cameras. Right. Um, it appears physically that's that's the primary focus. And I mean, I, I don't disagree. You only get like one shot to take, you know, a magical picture and yeah. and the best camera is the camera that's in your pocket. So I would agree that the, 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 the most, you know, a, aggressive um, hardware development and I phones is, is the camera. So always look forward to those updates. Um, the, but the software actually makes, you know, a phone completely different and that's going to be free. So it's kind of amazing that like you have a an iPhone that's been updated with software three times in the last three years, and that the phone you purchased is 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 completely different than the phone you get to use right now because of free software updates. Another kind of unsung, you know, thing that a lot of customers get to enjoy. But as far as hardware rumors, bigger, better, faster camera, uh, more responsive. You know, at this point, I think that the phones are are pretty evolutionary not revolutionary the revolution is done and now it's the okay. evolution um and it's just kind of the, the the central part of the ecosystem of all the other stuff how it interacts with an apple watch um ar vr stuff that might be coming and and, and stuff like that so you know bring it on uh every fall <laughs> 
Right, really excited for iPhone as well. With this, would like to end the episode for today, Andrew. Thank you so much for giving us your time. All the best with all the future products. And uh, this was a lovely episode, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. I'm gonna see you guys next week with more exciting content. Probably another celebrity guest with us, or maybe testing a new gadget for yourself. So stay tuned and keep listening to the iGeeks Blog Show.